Hi, I'm Michael Tobosa. I'm Andy Hawk. I'm Alexa Villa. I'm Abaya Harris. I'm Ryan Kroll. We're Team Caleb, and our project was Effective Adaptive Environments. And our sponsors were Helen Chavez, Javier Gonzalez, and Rob, Dr. Robert Atkinson. The project utilized sensors that produce raw data values, which are fed into a server which normalizes the values and corresponds to a pleasure, arousal, dominance, or for brevity, pad value. This pad value affects the adaptive changes in the environment, which is also the client side of the application. The client side is actually the part that we focused on in the project, whereas the sensor suite was systematically reused by a previous team in Capstone. As previously stated in our project, we have two separate elements of our project. There's a server application and a client application. The server has the connection to the sensors, and then the server is uh, connected to the client via a socket connection. Inside the client application, we then pull from the server the pad values every 10 seconds, and then once we have those values, we parse through the string of data and determine um, eight different states. Right now, we listed only four because those are the four that we focused on. And then based on, we want to, the goal is to get the state user into the state of engagement and stay in engagement. So we use these other three states to push them into an engaged state. And the way we do this is through changing the number of ghosts, the speed of the ghost, the speed of Pac-Man, um, the different mazes that will load up. Uh, there's hard, medium, and uh, easy mazes, as well as making the fruits and the power dots visible in the game. And also the tempo and speed of the music will change. In addition, we also incorporated some log files. That way, the, uh, the testers can see when people die uh, in the game and see how many ghosts there were, how many power, how much, how close they were to finishing the game, and what time that exactly was, and what state they were in. Um, and they could also see what state they went to next after changes were made in the game. Next, we also have the user guides that we use to help the testers and developers further finish this game and make it. Uh, a lot better too. And then we also have some documentation also to make the game a lot simpler to navigate for developers. For our project, we were given two sensors. The first being a mouse and the second being a chair sensor. Because our project focuses on keystrokes, we altered the mouse into a glove. The mouse collects data from the sensors on the top and on the sides of it. When we altered the mouse, we placed these sensors in the palm of the glove and on the fingertips so that they could record the data from the user. So as the game starts, one of the first things you'll notice is that the music starts playing. Now the music is based on the user state, which is shown here in the bottom corner of the screen. Now the user state will also have an effect on the speed of the ghost and of Pac-Man, as well as the items he can collect. So as the user switches to a frustrated state, we can now hear that the music has slowed down and the user can now collect the items such as the power pellets to eat the ghost as well as collect fruits which will give him a bonus points. Now the user can now also gain an extra life by collecting the new 1-ups. Now additional ghosts will be added when the user switches to a bored state and the music speed will increase. Now as the game continues and the user gets closer to beating the game, that state will be used to load a new level based on how they were feeling. So if the user was having difficulty, a new easier map will be loaded, or if the user was in a bored state, a new difficult map will be loaded. We took away many lessons from this project. The first is how to communicate with our team members. We started off initially having communication problems due to lack of contact information and different forms of communication. By the end of the project, we all decided that email was the best and worked best for all members. This helps in scheduling meetings and also in getting things done last minute that needed to be finished. A uh, second lesson that we learned as a team was how to deal with scope changes. Through our project, we had four or five different changes in scope, and we had to learn how to deal in a shortened timeline. Uh, the main way that we learn to do this is through communication, as we talked about before, and then also by eliciting requirements quickly from our sponsor. By determining the requirements, we knew what goals we needed to achieve, and we were able to get these done on time. We would like to thank Dr. Callis and our sponsors for giving us the opportunity to work on this project. This is Team Caleb, signing off.